This one is there. Thank you. There is really only one thing that I know for sure, and that is that no human being knows what life has in store for them. My client, Edie Windsor, sure did it. As a young middle-class woman growing up in Philadelphia after the Great Depression, she obviously had no idea what the future would hold. When asked shortly after we filed our case what it felt like to be a plaintiff suing the federal government, Edie remarked that it's one thing to be out as a lesbian, but it's another thing entirely to be the out lesbian who just happens to be suing the United States of America. <laughs> the same, of course, is true for me. As a closeted lesbian high school student in Cleveland and Ohio, one of the many things that Julie and I share are fellow Buckeyes, uh, as a clo closeted college student in college, or as a slightly less closeted law student in the 1980s. If you had told me that one day, as an out litigation partner, I would marry a woman, have a child, and then win a landmark civil rights case before the United States Supreme Court, I would have told you that you were certifiably insane. <laughs> so when I received the telephone number of a then 80-year-old lady by the name of Edie Windsor, I obviously had no idea that we would win a landmark Supreme Court case holding that gay couples have the same right to be treated with dignity and respect as straight couples. Now, one of the most important lessons, thank you. One of the most important lessons that any lawyer, and I would, I would dare say any writer learns, is that facts matter. They matter a lot. In fact, any good lawyer worth their salt knows that facts can be stubborn things. It's unwise, if not foolish, to bring or defend any case without paying very close attention to the facts before, during, and after trial. So what did that mean in the context of United States v. Windsor? First and foremost, it meant that we knew from the very beginning that to borrow a phrase from the first presidential campaign of Bill Clinton it's all about Edie Stupid. <laughs> this was significant not only because of who Edie Windsor was and is, but because in contrast to many of the LGBT rights cases that had been brought in the past, our case involved only one plaintiff. I think that what often got lost in these previous cases with multiple plaintiffs is the stories of the plaintiffs themselves. After all, it is hard for a judge or a jury to focus on several plaintiffs at once but it is much easier to focus on only one. And unfortunately, when the facts fade into the background, a gay civil rights case can look more like a debate between Fox News and MSNBC than a case about real people and their lives. Our view was that the best way to defeat DOMA was not to focus on lawyers or pundits or anything else, but to focus instead on two very real people, Edie Windsor and her late sp spouse, The Aspire. So how did we do that? Believe it or not, we lawyers are writers too, or at least we like to think we're writers too. Uh, so in our complaint and our briefs, we told a story. We told the story of Edie and Thea's lives as the great love story that it was. Our goal, however, wasn't to write a Harlequin romance. Rather, what we hoped to show was to show that Edie and Thea, who spent 44 years together truly in sickness and in health, till death did them part, lived their lives with the same decency and the same dignity as everybody else. And by showing that truth, we tried to demonstrate that Edie and Thea had the very kind of marriage that any single one of us, gay or straight, would be so incredibly lucky to have. Now, I'm sure I don't have to tell this group of writers that not only do facts matter, but words matter too. Uh, those of you who know me, including Julie and, and my old friend Debbie Myers, know that I can have a stubborn streak. Uh, one of my favorite books to read to my son when he was little, and I don't think it's a coincidence, was A Dog Needs a Bone. <laughs> um, and one of the things that I was adamant about when we were writing our brief is the language that we use to describe gay people. Let me be specific. I was absolutely refused to use phrases like same sex or opposite sex or homosexual or heterosexual anywhere in our briefs. 
Why, you might ask? Because I believe that Americans who are comfortable with gay people don't refer to them using those words. In other words, if like so many Americans today, you have a neighbor, a friend, a colleague, or a family member who is gay, you don't refer to that person as a homosexual. And you certainly don't refer to their husband or wife as their same-sex spouse. <laughs> Thus, while it is true, as it was, has been reported, that we, chose, that we were given advice to de-gay our case, uh, that is Ariel reported, that was not advice that we chose to follow because that's precisely what our case was all about. Now, standing here today, I don't know if that decision, that stubbornness of mine, had any impact on the Supreme Court. The court, in fact, did use the word same sex in its opinion. However, almost all the language from its prior gay rights cases in Lawrence and Romer, suggesting that gay people were somehow very different than straight people, is completely absent from Windsor, even in the dissents. Indeed, rather than criticizing either the gay culture conf, as he did in Romer, or the so-called homosexual agenda, as he did in Lawrence, Justice Scalia now criticizes the other justices instead. And indeed, during my oral argument, he even used the word gay. That itself is a form of progress. Uh, the Supreme Court, in its opinion in Windsor, uses the word dignity 10 times in its 26-page opinion. Now, I'm a Paul Weiss partner. I'm a, lit, I'm a bit um, obsessive compulsive, so I thought I would look the word up. Uh, according to the dictionary, the word dignity means the state or quality of being worthy of honor or respect. Sometimes it's the simplest things that say the most. The state or quality of being worthy of honor or respect is exactly what the Windsor case was all about. And now that the Supreme Court has decided that gay people and their relationships are equally worthy of honor and respect under the Constitution, the equivalent of the Battle of Normandy for gay civil rights has been won. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. When we filed Edie's case in 2010, only five states permitted gay people to marry, not including New York, and that's my fault because I lost that case in 2006. <laughs> when I argued the Supreme Court case last March, only nine states did. Today, 17 states, representing 44% of the US population, allow gay couples to marry. There have been 24 decisions throughout the country in states as far apart in geography, and this is truly unbelievable, in culture as Ohio and Utah, New Jersey and Oklahoma, or Oregon and Arkansas, relying on Windsor to extend rights to gay people. And pa pa pa, I'm very superstitious, there's not a single case so far going the other way. The change is happening so much faster than I or anyone else ever expected. Even Republican Senator Orrin Hatch was recently quoted last week as saying, let's face it, anybody who does not believe that gay marriage is going to be the law of the land hasn't been living in the real world. So, Justice Scalia and I completely agree now on at least two things. <laughs> The first is, and I totally agree with him on this, Chicago-style Chicago pizza is not really pizza. <laughs> and the second thing is that the underlying logic and language of Windsor will lead to equal marriage in all 50 states. So thank you so very much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. It's so important. It's so important that we keep telling these stories. It's so important that women keep writing them. Uh, you can write them as you do as writers. You can write them as I do. It pays a little better if you do it the way I do as a lawyer. 
Um, but it's so important that we keep telling our stories and convincing the world that we all have, all of us, straight or gay, male or female, young or old, whatever your race is, we all have equal dignity under the law. Thank you so much.